Hey guys, how's it going? I hope you're having a very good day. So for today's video, I'm starting 2015 with a bookshelf tour, the long-awaited bookshelf tour. It's been a while for sure. I thought this would be a great time to do one since I reorganized my bookshelves by series. If you haven't checked that video out, I will leave a link of it in the description box below. But yes, I decided to change it up this year, go the more practical, sensible route. And I guess how I figured it out, I didn't do it out alphabetically either. I just kind of put the series that I completed and I don't think I would be accessing it regularly at the very top shelves. And I put my graphic novels and comic books up there as well just because they're really tall and they don't fit on any of the other shelves. And on the very bottom shelf I put all of my standalone books and like I said in my reorganization video there wasn't really any rhyme or reason to how I organized it because I really didn't know what I was going to do. I kind of put similar books kind of together, similar elements, things like that, but for the most part they're not in alphabetical order or anything. I know. Also at the end of reorganizing my bookshelves, I noticed a couple of series were out of order, primarily A Song of Ice and Fire. A lovely commenter noticed I put A Feast for Crows and A Storm of Swords out of order and I'm thinking, oh right, A Storm of Swords was the third book. Ugh. Yeah, that was kind of a brain fart on my part. Also, I noticed the Gone series, Fear and Plague, were out of order as well, so I fixed that for sure. But other than that, I think for the most part, it looks pretty good. I know in the upcoming months, it'll get all shuffled and messy yet again, and then have to do it all again next year. We'll do it next year. Anyways, let's take a closer look at the books on the shelves. So let's get started with this bookshelf tour. Oh my gosh, I'm holding my camera, so I'm sorry if this is uneasy. But yeah, on this bottom shelf here, I wanted to incorporate some of my favorite books and some books that may be eye-catching and colorful as well just for doing videos and things like that. So I incorporated the Scott Pilgrim graphic novel series and at the bottom there, of course, you could see Zombies versus Unicorns, the anthology, my favorite YA book, Fangirl by Rainbow Rowell. We have the absolutely True Diary of a Part-Time Indian. Above that, Speak by Lori Hells Anderson, which was really good. The Lies of Lakamora, which I'm very excited for. And To Kill a Mockingbird, which Susie gave me uh, for Christmas, for the holidays, a couple of years ago. Thanks, Susie. I have to get to that for sure. And then moving on, we have The Princess Bride by William Goldman, which I love. I believe Sarah from Mother Effing Books suggested that book, and I love it. It's hilarious. And the movie is so good, too. You have to check it out. And we have Gillian Flynn's Gone Girl. Let's focus in a little bit, which is great so good one of my favorite reads this year or i guess by the time you're seeing it last year juno diaz oh that's a really good book uh the brief wondrous life of oscar wow we have ready player one by ernest klein and i believe his new book armada is coming out in 2015 so hopefully that will be good. We have Mr. Penumbra's 24-Hour Bookstore by Robin Sloan beside that. We have The Little Prince by Antoine de saint Exubery, and I did a book review on that. Really enjoyed that read. We have Sir Arthur Conan Doyle's Sherlock Holmes, which I need to continue on. I think I was just beginning the adventures of Sherlock Holmes, which I was really liking, so that's good. We have George Orwell's 1984 which I really like. I want to get that Penguin edition where it's censored out like the title. I think that's really cool. We have I Capture the Castle by Dodie Smith. Can I focus on that? Yes, I can. And then beside that is um, Charlotte Bronte's Jane Eyre, which I really liked as well. Philip Pullman's His Dark Materials trilogy, which I have to finish. Uh, I only read the first book, The Golden Compass. And there's my little uh, taxi right on top there. Can I focus? No, I can't. Apparently not. There we go. Just pull back. I think it used to be a magnet, but the magnet fell off. I got that at New York. Anyways, continuing on, we have some classics here. A Tree Grows in Brooklyn by Betty Smith. The Catcher in the Rye by J.D. Salinger. We have Slaughterhouse Five by Kurt Vonnegut. F. Scott Fitzgerald. 
ah, mouthful, uh, The Great Gatsby. Then we have Mark Haddon's The Curious uh, Incident of the Dog in the Nighttime. And then beside that is The Odyssey by Homer, which I have to read. Oh, uh, I need to read that, especially if I'm gonna start with uh, the Lost Hero by Rick Riordan. I want to read that. Anyways, continue on. Fahrenheit 451 by Ray Bradbury. We have Fight Club by Chuck Palahniuk. Max Berry's Lexicon. We have Lamb by Christopher Moore, which I really liked and really, and it's really funny, surprisingly thoughtful. <laughs> and yes, it's a good time. We have some horror books, or I guess Stephen King books as well. I Am Not a Serial Killer, right at the top there by Dan Wells. It's part of a series, I believe, and it intrigued me. The first book really intrigued me, so maybe I'll continue it. I don't know yet. Um, there's I Am Legend and other short stories by Richard Matheson. We have uh, Thomas Harris's The Silence of the Lambs. This is the second book in the series. Then we have Stephen King's The Shining and The Long Walk. Then we have The Silver Linings Playbook by Matthew Quick. Kind of different from the movie, but still an enjoyable read. I really liked it. Then we have The Thirteenth Tale by Diane Sutterfield, which is kind of a dark, kind of historical fiction-y kind of read. It was a good one. I liked it. And of course we have the amazing Dan Brown books, Inferno and The Da Vinci Code. The Da Vinci Code got me back into reading recreationally after college or during college. So yeah. <laughs> and then we have Baymax. Uh, I love him so much. Yes. And next we have John Green's books. We have Looking for Alaska, An Abundance of Catherine, Paper Towns, Will Grayson, Will Grayson, which he wrote with David Levithan. Then we had The Fault in Our Stars. My favorite would be Looking for Alaska, An Abundance of Catherine's I thought was really good. I felt it was kind of a summerish read because it takes place during the summer. And yeah, those, those are my favorite, I would say. Next, we have some nonfiction work. Party of One by Anelia Rufus, The Loner's Manifesto, Susan Cain's Quiet, The Power of Introverts in a World That Can't Stop Talking. Uh, we have The Novel Cure and A to Z of Literary Remedies. And this is kind of a book recommending other books. And someone asked me on Tumblr if I recommended that read. Sorry for the late response. <sighs> no, <laughs> I, don't I was flipping through it and I was reading it and I felt some of the recommendations kind of got on the spoilery side. There was too much information <laughs> on certain books and it's like, oh no, I don't want to know that. So yeah. Anyways, uh, beside that is How to Read Literature Like a Professor by Thomas C. Fo Foster. What I'm really liking about that read is he talks about things in a very accessible way that I can understand. So I thought that was really good. I have to continue on and finish that. And the next book is The Horologicon by Mark Forsyth. Beside that is Neil Gaiman's Make Good Art Speech. Beside that is Tuesdays with Maury by Mitch Album. Next, we're gonna get into kind of the first book in series that I want to continue for the most part. So beside Tuesdays with Maury, we have Poison Study by Maria V. Snyder. This is the the study series. So I hear really great things about the next two books and I really want to continue on with it as well. I want to continue on with Love Grossman's The Magicians. It was so good. The characters got on my nerves a whole lot, but the story and what was happening was very good. I liked it. And I would really like to continue The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy by Douglas Adams. I was a bit kind of mm, about the first book, so I'm hoping the next books will be better for me. I'm hoping. Let's see, what do we have? We have The Mysterious Benedict Society by Trenton Lee Stewart, and this is a middle grade novel, and I did enjoy it, so I would really like to continue on with this series because of the awesome cover. I like the illustration of it, and merely for that fact, I would like to own all of it. Oh gosh. <laughs> <laughs> okay, back, where were we? Um, oh, I put that in the wrong place. Yep. All right. 
onwards. So beside that, we have The Thief, and I really want to continue with this series as well. It was kind of slow at the very beginning of the story, and then it really picked up, and then I really liked it at the end, so I really want to check that out. Next, we have Graveyard Shift and Breadcrumbs, which I recently hauled, so I'm looking forward to those reads. And then we have The Agency, A Spy in the House. That's the first book in the Mary Quinn Mysteries. I'd really like to continue on with this series because there is a person of color as a main character, which is really great. Beside that is Only the Good Spy Young, and this is by Allie Carter. I think this is the fourth book in the Gallagher Girl series. So it's a spy. Yeah, we have the two spy books together, so that's cool. And then we have Burn Bright by Marianne De Piers and Daniel Marks Velveteen. And also we have Hold Me Closer Necromancer by Lish McBride. Beside that we have The Enemy by Charlie Higson. The Book Thief by Marcus Cusack, and The Boy in the Striped Pajamas by, who is this by? Boyne. John Boyne, of course. And then we have Sarah Jessen's Along for the Ride, and Amy and Rogers' Up a Detour by Morgan Matson. We have kind of like transportation typey books together. And then we have, what is this? Oh, The Perks of Being a Wallflower by Stephen Chabalski. We have Ellen Hopkins, yeah. Yeah, Ellen Hopkins. Crank. And then we have Dash and Lily's Book of Dares by Rachel Cohn and David Levithan. Then we have Side Effects May Vary by Julie Murphy. Beside that is Beauty Queens by Libra Bray. And then we have my Animal Crossing New Leaf official game guide if I need to use it. Hello Please, which is a nonfiction book about um, Japanese mascots or uh, characters, cute characters from Japan and I just love mascots over in Japan because they put faces, they make characters out of everything which is a big selling point in their products I believe so that's just cute and then when we have this little guy who's just filling up space there he's cute and then we have my Nintendo DS games let's get a closer look focus focus or Go back. Okay. So we have Pokemon Alpha Sapphire, Pokemon Y, Fantasy Life, Animal Crossing, New Leaf, Tomodachi Life, Super Smash Bros, The Legend of Zelda, A Link Between Worlds, Professor Layton versus Phoenix Wright, Ace Attorney. I haven't got too far into that game. It's like Professor Layton. I want to throw that game against the wall sometimes because it's frustrating when you don't get a question right. And you feel kind of stupid. Anyways, then below that is Professor Lane, The Curious Village. What I love about these two games, though, sorry, is the animation cutscenes. They're beautiful. And below that is Mario Kart DS. And then we have some hardcovers here. Scarlet by Marissa Meyer. That is the second book in the Lunar Chronicle series. We have Brian Selznick, The Invention of Hugo Cabray. And then we have Libra Bray's The Diviners. Whoop. Okay, got that? Alrighty, on to the next shelf. Shelf number two, we have at the very bottom here, we have Jasper Ford's Shades of Grey, the first book in the, I guess, the Shades of Grey series. I'm waiting, Mr. Ford, for your second book, hopefully soon. And then we have Jasper Ford's first book in... I don't know what the series is called, but this is The Air Fair. It's really wacky fantasy, science fiction, all that fun good stuff. Yeah. And then above that we have some classics that kind of go together in the same kind of series. We have Alice Adventures in Wonderland and Through the Looking Glass. And this is Jane Austen's Emma. These are premier classics. And above that we have some Penguin classics, Don Quixote, and we have Mary Shelley's Frankenstein. I haven't read these three classics. Ugh. I will get to them, hopefully in the future sometime, yes. And then above that we have Magic Knight Ray Earth by Clamp. And then we have my manga, lots of shoujo manga. We have Otomen by Aya. Kano, and then we have Beauty Pop by Kyoko Arai, and then we have Death Note, and this is by Sugumi Oba and Takashi Obata, and then we have, of course, Aran High School Host Club by Bisco Hattori. So next, we have Rick Riordan's books. We have the first series. 
Kathy wrote, which is Percy Jackson, and the Olympian series. We have The Lightning Thief, The Sea of Monsters is the second book, the third being The Titan's Curse, the fourth is The Battle of the Labyrinth, and the last book, The Last Olympian. And then we continue on with the spin-off series, uh, The Lost Heroes, with, uh, sorry, The Heroes of Olympus, and the first book is The Lost Hero, the second one being The Son of Neptune, the third, The Mark of Athena, the fourth, The House of Hades, the fifth, The Blood of Olympus, and that's the last book in the series. And then we have his Egyptian God series with The Red Pyramid, the second book being, I believe, The Throne of Fire, and the third one being The Serpent's Shadow, and this is the King Chronicle series. Yes. So that's Rick Riordan's babies, I would say. <laughs> Moving on, we have George R. R. Martin's A Song of Ice and Fire series, the first one being A Game of Thrones, the second Clash of Kings, the third one being A Storm of Swords, the fourth A Feast for Crows, and the current book out is A Dance with Dragons. So that is that series. I still have to read uh, the last book, A Dance with Dragons. My favorite, I would say, would be A Game of Thrones and A Storm of Swords just because they're amazing. Continuing on, we have oop, we have some more classics. Pride and Prejudice by Jane Austen. Beside that is Sense and Sensibility. And beside that is Dracula by Bram Stoker. And so we have my favorite Pride and Prejudice. It's so good, so good. Next we have the King Killer Chronicle series by Patrick Rothfuss. The Name of the Wind being the first book, and The Wise Man's Fear being the second book. And next, beside that, we have The Lord of the Rings. And we have the first book being The Fellowship of the Ring. Then we have, ooh, let's make it crisp there. The second book being The Two Towers, and the third, The Return of the King. And we have The Hobbit. I actually want to reread The Hobbit before watching the last film in The Hobbit trilogy, so... I don't know when that will be, but that's what I want to do. Next, we have Harry Potter by J.K. Rowling. And so the first book, we have Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone. We have the second book, Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets. The third book being The Prisoner of Azkaban. The fourth, uh, Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire. The fifth being Harry Potter and the... Order of the Phoenix. Oh my gosh, I should know that title by heart, but I was kind of reading it and it's kind of difficult to read from this vantage point. I don't know. The blue on blue is difficult to read, but actually on the video it looks pretty good. Harry Potter and the Half-Blood Prince is the sixth book and my favorite one out of the series. And Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows is the last and final book. And over here we have Patrick Ness's books at the bottom, A Monster Calls by him. And then we have his uh, Chaos Walking trilogy right over here. And let's zoom in there. Do, do, do. Okay, so we have The Knife of Never Letting Go, the first book, The Ask and the Answer, which is the second, and Monsters of Men, which is the third book. This is probably my favorite and satisfying young adult series. It's pretty intense. It's kind of dark and heavy and sad. I highly recommend it. And above that series, the Chaos Walking Trilogy, we have C.S. Lewis, The Chronicles of Narnia. Yes. <laughs> oh god, my arms. Okay. Um, okay. So this is the order I got this series in. I know there's a lot of controversy, quote-unquote controversy, about the order of the books, but this is the order that I got the series in, so bear with me. The first book is The Magician's Nephew, the second book being The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe, the third being The Horse and His Boy, fourth, Prince Caspian, fifth, The Voyage of Don Trader, the sixth book, The Silver Chair, and the last book, The Last Battle. And above that, we have J.K. Rowling's other books, companion books to the Harry Potter series, which are Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them. We have Quidditch Through the Ages and The Tales of Beetle the Bard. So, sorry if I'm shaking. I'm so sorry. Okay. 
All right, guys, last shelf. Oh my gosh. We did it. I did it. Team effort. Okay. All right. So the series on the bottom there is Rick Yancey's Monstermologist series. It's a young adult horror, which I really enjoyed up until the last one, which kind of turned into a typical YA direction, but you know, what can you do? Anyway, <laughs> uh, the Monstermologist I really like. And above that is the Devouring series, uh, which is another young adult horror series, which has a lot of cliche horror elements, but I don't know, it kind of worked for some reason. I enjoyed it anyways. So the first book is The Devouring, the second one Solstice, and the third one being Fearscape. And beside this we have, oh my gosh, the Gone series. It looks pretty good, except for that Lies one. Because the spine is so small, it doesn't have that great impact as the other ones. But anyways, it looks pretty cool like that. So the first book is Gone, the second is Hunger, the third being Lies, the fourth is Plague, the fifth is Fear, and the last book being Light. It was pretty good at the very beginning and then it kind of declined by the fourth and fifth book. I don't know, it was getting really over the top craziness. It's like X-Men meets Degrassi, I think was how I described the series when I first read it. So. Yeah, be prepared if you pick it up. The next series is The Maze Runner by James Dashner. We have The Maze Runner, The Scorch Trials, and The Death Cure. And I absolutely love the first one. And my love kind of declined as the series progressed, which was kind of sad, but true. And so we have Cassandra Clare series. We have the prequel, Clockwork Angel, Clockwork Prince, and Clockwork Princess. And this is a fantasy steampunk-ish series. It, of course, is the Shadowhunter world. So I really enjoyed that series. And next we have Cassandra Clare's Mortal Instruments series. The first one being City of Bones, the second City of Ashes, the third City of Glass, and the fourth is City of Fallen Angels. And I don't know if I'm going to be continuing on with the series just because I don't know I thought it would have been fine if it ended with City of Glass. I know there's other characters and plot lines that need to be wrapped up, but I don't know why it had to be part of the same series. So it's a young adult urban fantasy kind of series. Sassy characters, fun dialogue, cheesy romance, all that fun stuff. So that's Cassandra Clare's books. And next we have some of my graphic novels and comic books. We of course have the Lock and Key series by Joe Hill and Gabriel Rodriguez 136. So we have Welcome to Lovecraft, Head Games, Crown of Shadows, the third one, Keys to the Kingdom, Clockworks, and finally Alpha and Omega. Highly recommended. It's a horror series and lots of violence and graphic content. So just a heads up for those who are interested in that kind of thing. And above that we have Watchmen by Alan Moore and Dave Gibbons and V for Vendetta by Alan Moore and David Lloyd and enjoyed those reads. Very good. And then we have Batman Beyond, Batgirl Beyond, which is a trade. It's a mix of different, of course, Batman Beyond stories. And then we have Mouse by Art Spiegelman, one and two. And then above that, we have Brian Lee O'Malley's Seconds graphic novel, which I thought was a lot of fun, really funny. And then we have some art books, um, Illustration School, Let's Draw Magical Color, and Illustration School, Let's Draw Plants and Small Creatures. And it's a very cute, whimsical illustration book. Next, we have Brian K. Vaughn's work. We have Why the Last Man and Saga. Saga is by Brian K. Vaughn and Fiona Staples. And then we have some Marvel trades, Doctor Strange, we have Civil War, we have Infinity Gauntlet and Infinity War, and Inhumans, which I'm really looking forward to. Oh, I'm sure a lot of people are getting antsy about the different heights of those books. <laughs> Personally, I'm not too critical about different heights and paperback and hardback and the mix of the two. Anyways, continuing on, we have The Hunger Games by Suzanne Collins. The first one being The Hunger Games, second Catching Fire, and the third one being Mockingjay. I have yet to watch the Mockingjay movie, by the way. Maybe I'll wait till the second part comes out. 
I don't know. I don't know when I'll watch it, but I'm looking forward to it. Beside that is the Heist Society series by Ellie Carter. And so we have the first book, Heist Society, second book, Uncommon Criminals, and the third book, Perfect Scoundrels. Beside that, we have Anna and the French Kiss by Stephanie Perkins, Lola and the Boy Next Door, and Isla and the Happily Ever After. Oh, oh it's different. The third book is different. Uh, but it's fine. <laughs> Anyways, we have Scott Westerfeld's books right over here. We have the Leviathan series, the first book being Leviathan, second Behemoth, and the third Goliath. It's a young adult steampunk novel an alternate history of World War One with fantasy elements and it's pretty cool. There's illustrations in it as well. And then we have I think the first dystopian young adult series I got into which is the Ugly series by Scott Westerfeld. We have Uglies. The first book, second is Pretties, third is Specials, fourth is Extras. And then we have the kind of companion book Bogus to Bubbly which Scott Westerfeld talks about the world building and different aspects of the series and I really liked it. I want to reread it to see if I still have the same feelings for it but I really like Taliwa and the drama she gets into so yeah that's that and beside that we have Marie Lou's legend series the first two books we have legend and prodigy I need to get the third one champion yeah and so I really want to finish that series off. And another series that I want to finish is the Unwind series. Oh no, this is in the wrong order. Let's fix that. Ooh. The first book. Okay, so the first book is Unwind and the second book is Unholy. I really like it. It's a dystopian, creepy series. It's very good. I cannot wait to see how the series finishes. And beside that, we have Rachel Hawkins' books, the first books in our series, Rebel Bell and Hex Hall. Really want to finish those series. I believe Hex Hall is finished, or is it ongoing? Not too sure. Have to fact check that. And then we have Neil Gaiman's books, The Graveyard Book, and Coraline. And we also have Good Omens right over there, which he wrote with Terry Pratchett. And then we have Libba Bray's Gemma Doyle trilogy. I have yet to read the last book. Really want to finish the series as well. The first book is A Great and Terrible Beauty, and the second book is Rebel Angels. And Below that is another series I want to finish, and that is, what is this? The Books of Beginning series. This is a middle grade fantasy series with time travel, crazy time travel, and fantastical creatures. Uh, the first book is The Emerald Atlas. Oh, it's out of order. The first book is The Emerald Atlas, and the second book is The Fire Chronicle. And then we have the EO... Eona Eon duology. The first book being Eon, and the second book or last book being Iona. That's kind of out of order too. But we're done. Am I done? I'm done talking about books. Yay! So those are all the books I managed to fit on the shelves. There are a lot of other books that I didn't include because I don't have any room, but this is what we have here. It's pretty crazy. Oh my gosh. Yeah. So that's that's that. Anyways guys, I really hope you enjoyed this bookshelf tour. It took me forever to do it, but I did it. Anyways guys, I really hoped you enjoyed this video. I will talk to you later and have a very good one. Bye!